Do you want a clean beauty routine that doesn't break the bank? Stay with us in this episode and find out how. About six weeks ago, I did a post on Instagram stories that elicited a very strong response from others. The post was about a blush that I purchased um, on Amazon and about how over the last several years I've had a commitment to purchasing quote unquote clean beauty. I think that's a loaded word and we're going to dive into that in this episode, but that I got this product that was going to be good for my skin and and endocrine system, et cetera, et cetera, without being a hormonal disruptor, blah, blah, blah. But I also didn't break the bank. I think I spent 4 or $5 on it. And I just got this flood, flood of DMs saying, how I'm used, you know, I, I want to be, you know, using clean skincare, clean makeup, but I'm paying $40 for a blush or $180 for my skincare routine. How do you do both? How can you have clean beauty without breaking the bank? And then began the back and forth of DMs with many different women. I've even had text messages in my phone of people who saw that story. You know, people I know in real life, they've just flat out texted me um, on my cell phone asking for similar input of how I did this, how I've blended these two things. Um, And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I am joined by uh, one of our Wallet Win teammates, Hannah Kreitz. She is here with me. Hello. And we're going to dive into this topic. It, it can be controversial. Again, there's a lot of loaded words. There's a lot of buzzwords. It's mm-hmm. a very hot industry right now. Um, but Hannah and I are going to dissect this as women who are both committed to avoiding products that are actually harmful for any part of our bodies or our systems. But we're both very financially intentional. And we are women that have goals and priorities and they involve taking care of ourselves but we're not going to overspend on products because we want to go after our goals and we want to give and we want to do other things in our life other than put creams on our face (laughs) and and you know so that's kind of how we've both been on this journey discovering alternative options yeah and I'll also preface that with the fact that I suffer from hormonal cystic acne it's something that I continue to deal with as an adult and so I don't even know how many hundreds of dollars I have spent on Mm. trying products and testing products and throwing away products so it's just a topic that is very near and dear to my heart as far as finding products that not only work but yep don't break the bank in the process Oh, right. I mean, how many times have all of any of us been told, here's this miracle cure-all. It's only $300 to get the set, and then you get it, and it doesn't do what it said it was going to do. Exactly. And we're going to get into that. One of the things that we're going to discuss is around some of that marketing that's out there. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we're going to dive in. We've got four things we want to chit-chat about. Yeah. on how to do clean beauty that doesn't harm you financially. Um, so Hannah, why don't you jump us off with the first point? Yeah, point number one is just to simplify your routine. Um, and the story that I was telling Amanda th- was <laughs> that a couple of years ago, I was doing the curly girl method. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, that is basically curly hair ne- it needs to be taken care of differently than yes. straight hair does. Um, and I have a more wave to my curl, um, but if I like get the right products in it mm-hmm. and um, the humidity is like just right, I get a pretty nice curl in my hair. Um, but what I was, what I, I ended up getting so, and this was only like a year ago, I'm ashamed to say, but what ended up happening was I got so sucked into this um, curly girl method YouTube uh, community of sorts and these YouTube influencers who were doing the curly hair method. And I sat back and realized that I had like a seven product routine, which was insane. It was a pre shampoo treatment, shampoo, conditioner, um, leave in conditioner, mousse gel, uh, and like it was just ridiculous. And so once I had switched <laughs> to a much more simple routine that was just four products, shampoo, condition, 
gel and then the heat protectant for when I was blow drying my hair. Mm -hmm. It was so easy and so simple. And my hair looked so much better because it wasn't completely overloaded with products. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case with, you know, so many other areas of our beauty is, um, beauty processes and all that. And that we have these skincare influencers who tell us that we need an 18 product routine when (laughs) really at the heart of it, we just need a basic cleanser, Mm -hmm. some kind of treatment, depending on what your skincare needs are, whether that be an acne treatment or an anti-aging or a vitamin C, a moisturizer, and then sunscreen during the day. Yep. That's about it. I actually read an article, actually a few articles, um, sometime in the last year, basically summing up this exact point right? of that you don't need the 18 sweet, you know, cleansing, blah, blah, blah routine. So I shouldn't be spending $30 on a skincare refrigerator. What? That's yeah. a thing? Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. You could just use your own refrigerator. It's probably more than $30. <laughs> Uh, just at the at the point of like if you actually look down at the 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 ingredients, you can typically, um, you know the the eighteen product whatever you're layering on your face blah blah blah. Most of the time, you're going to be able to find an alternative in about four products because at the end of the day, a lot of those suites of products are just layering more and more of that same ingredient on. Mm. And you're just repeating things that you've already done. And there's not a, a, um, what am I thinking? What what is the word I'm trying to get? Not really a reason or a proven result for just continuing to layer on the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. Right. You could have achieved the same effect for all intents and purposes in maybe four products Mm -hmm. like you had just discussed. Maybe five. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to do like a vitamin C and one of those other things. Right. Um, like you were trying to work on, you know, wrinkles, anti-aging, mm. things like that. Um, or you were trying to do a deeper cleanse or you wanted to do like a mask mm-hmm. or something like that. Totally. So there's room for a handful of products. And I, I'm all about that. Yeah. But in your daily routine, it doesn't need to be more than just a couple It does not need to be 19 things that you've layered onto your face all day. Right. And a lot of those more luxury type skincare things are fun just to pamper yourself. The mask, the the special exfoliants and all that stuff. And that's great once in a while. But I think of that more as a pampering type, you know, stay at home. Put a charcoal mask on. Exactly. Get in the (laughs) bath and and use your Epsom salts and it's great. But as far as a daily skincare routine, that just, it doesn't make sense. And it's just not very practical too. Mm -hmm. So trying to find products that are more um, targeted and they're going to give you exactly what you need with one product. You don't need to spread it out into four. Right. That's going to help you keep it simple. You can probably achieve the exact same result you wanted with less product. Absolutely. And that's been proven, again, there have been so many studies on this. Do you actually need these? Do you need these really expensive products? Do you need tons and tons of different products? And whenever they really get down to doing the scientific research, the answer is no. Mm. You can probably accomplish the same results with just a handful. Yes. So that is step number one. Um Apologies to anybody who hears the herd of elephants upstairs. It's my kids running around with some babysitters. <laughs> I don't know if this mic picks it up. They're having a lot of fun. They're, they're enjoying themselves. All right. The second one. And this is the one that I have been sharing in DMs a lot. Um, and this is new to me. I've never, ever tried this. So I'm looking forward to yeah. exploring it and learning about I it. I can't wait to unpack this. Very practical tip. Uh, but years ago, I think this was the year 2016, I began working with a functional medicine doctor. Um, I had a lot of autoimmune things going Mm -hmm. on. My thyroid was all whacked out. Um, Just my adrenals were, you know, fatigued. And I just, I had bad numbers all over the place. Sure. Hormones, blah, blah, blah. So I went on something called the autoimmune protocol um, to kind of discover what it was that was harming my body that I was eating Uh, it also caused me to relook at all the products that I was putting onto my skin because our skin is our biggest, it's the largest organ in our body. Yeah. And if we're going to put something on it, it's going to absorb those things and whatever's in it. So, you know, people that say clean beauty is stupid and lame and unnecessary, that's, that's not true. 
if something has a hormonal disruptor on it and we're going to rub it on our bodies, we, it's going to cause an effect. Right. So for some people that are going to be more susceptible and prone to getting disrupted or they already are having underlying autoimmune issues, products can actually further exacerbate the issue. So my doctor said, okay, you know, you want to you wanna get the the sunscreen and you're you're wearing lipstick let's go ahead and find a really really clear easy to understand boundary uh, for what you should buy and what should just be off the table and she sent me to the environmental working group website and essentially it's this organization that looks at all the products that are out there and it will test the actual chemicals inside of them and it will rank them on a scale of like zero to 10, 10 being like the highest offenders. Um, And they also have a color scale. So anything that's green would be very safe. Anything yellow is, okay, this has got a few things in it that are known to cause allergic reactions or cancer. And then red is like, this is a proven carcinogen. This will, you know, disrupt and be issue, like cause issues for you. Um, so she basically said, try to find things that are basically green and, you know, maybe a one or a two way mm-hmm. down on the line. It has hardly anything in it that could cause issues with you. But if you can find something environmental working group certified, that is their highest standard of clean beauty. That's so interesting. So what do they classify as clean? Is it the way they source their ingredients or is it the way or just the formulas I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they look at both of those things. Great. Um, so it's something that if you're, yeah, ethically minded, you're going to feel good about what they're doing and how they're evaluating products. Um, but again, it's kind of that highest standard. So now I just kind of, when I go to their website, like I need something new, I need a face wash, I need blush. I go to their website and you can essentially just type in the product you're looking for and then you can filter by different criteria and I just filter by environmental working group certified and then it'll probably show me maybe seven or eight cleansers Mm -hmm. that maybe meet that criteria and then I now know I kind of have boundaries of what are my options and then that's it I don't have to go scour the internet scour every single website look at the back of their labels, blah, blah, blah. I, they've done the work for me. So now they're just, the, the options are in front of my face and it's now up to me to pick. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, I feel like that, knowing that that resource is here has just made this process so much easier. Um. So, but it, it does dovetail in kind of that next step. So just, so the environmental working group is a great place to start. Now I've got my seven cleansers. But how do I know which one to pick? Mm. That's that next step. Sure. And the next point that Hannah and I want to chat about is this idea of shopping around. Um, So when I'm on the Environmental Working Group website, a lot of times there'll be links to either go to the main company website Mm -hmm. or to go to Amazon just because they've made it easy to go buy the product right then and there. Right. But typically because I am who I am, I will... Uh, also put that product into the Google search and see I'll only spend about five minutes doing this so nobody think I'm doing this for an hour I'll I'll just hunt for all right these seven cleansers which one am I going to be able to get for the best deal right where is the best bang for my buck as far as how many ounces it has and what it's going to cost per ounce sure and nine times out of ten Amanda is going to pick the cheapest ounce Per, wait, what? My brain. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I get mixed up. The cheapest up. per ounce. Yes, there we go. Thank yeah. you, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> cheapest per ounce. Because I already know it's all clean skincare and it's going to be good. Right. So I'll I'll probably pick whatever that is. And I'm almost never disappointed with the, the result. But if I happen to be, well, then next time I'll just pick something different after I've used up whatever this is. Great. Um, but that, so that's how I'll shop, shop around from the environmental working group website. 
but you've kind of mentioned a few tips to yeah, me. Yeah, so it was it was kind of funny. A couple months ago, there was a particular moisturizer that my esthetician had recommended that I try out, and I was kind of uh, disappointed because the only place I could find it was Sephora. Ooh. And it was like $40 <laughs> for this. I think it was like a four ounce, which I guess is a pretty good price for four ounces ounce, yeah. but it was still a little more than I was willing to spend mm-hmm. so I was in TJ Maxx one day and um the moisturizer was sitting right there on the shelf <gasps> and it was nine dollars Woohoo! and I was just shocked and so I started kind of look digging around at TJ Maxx and I already buy my shampoo and conditioner from there's they have a brand that I really like there yeah. um but but I started digging around in the more beauty, skincare, makeup mm-hmm. section of the more discount department stores like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, et yep. cetera. Um, and I was shocked that there were so many like really high quality brands that I recognized mm-hmm. that were sitting there on discount. Super easy. Totally. And I think how TJ Maxx or... Home goods or whatever these stores are, they essentially just get, um, they buy in bulk things that other shops just that weren't selling or moving quick enough or that they overbought, you know, they had too much inventory, so then they needed to liquidate some of it. And that's where a place like TJ Maxx comes in. And that's why they receive kind of a smorgasbord of things. It's always never the same right. when, when you go in again, but you can find some real treasures. I remember. Back when I was um, getting married, I was trying to shop for like all my perfect makeup for the wedding day. And I was not clean beauty minded at that time at all. Um, So a few of the products I was looking for were NARS. And I'd gone to Sephora and they had done my face. And I liked some of the NARS products that they had used. And then when I was at TJ Maxx, a few weeks after that, I did not buy them at Sephora that day because I was trying to save for our wedding. And I didn't want to tell Jonathan I spent $180 $180 on lip gloss and blush. <laughs> Only 180 at Sephora? Uh, I found the NARS blush for like $7 at TJ Maxx. Perfect. So it is a place where you can get some really, really great high-end products and plenty of them that are still clean. And when I say, again, clean, I just feel like that word has such a, um, it's so loaded. It is. And even some of the products that are out there that claim clean, they aren't. No. They aren't. No. And that goes into knowing ingredients mm-hmm. of sorts in that I've spent so much time having to research ingredients because I know that there are particular ingredients that really irritate my skin. I've just have dealt with this adult acne for long enough to know that there are certain things that affect that. Um, so, for instance... Even just a couple months ago, I was really not liking my skin, my sunscreen anymore. Mm-hmm. They, I think they had changed the formula and it was just getting too, it was too thick. Um, so I wanted to find a new one. I shopped around, I but I didn't want to spend $50 for a sunscreen. And when I went yeah. looking for recommendations, everybody was recommending this one sunscreen from this one particular company that was like, unbelievably expensive and i'm super picky about sunscreen because i like when it's tinted because i'm not a big makeup wearer so Mm. the tint's really nice because it kind of evens out the skin tone which is really nice but shopping around looking comparing ingredients comparing prices there was that 50 dollars sunscreen that i knew the ingredients worked but i did not want to spend 50 dollars. yeah but i found one that was $12 on Amazon for like six ounces. Nice. Which was unbelievable. I tried it once and I have bought the thing three times now. Oh, wow. Um, It's great. It's my favorite sunscreen. That's awesome. Yes. Good old Amazon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You can find some really good steals there too. Um, So essentially just this idea of shopping around, you know, I wish it, paid to be loyal places these days but sometimes it just doesn't you know if you skip around from where you buy that product that you love um it keeps people competitive you might you might find a coupon code for it over here one day you might find it for a great price on amazon another day 
Uh, you can also set up alerts on Amazon. Mm. So when they do like put a product on sale, you can have it alert you. I think it's either on their site or on Camel Camel Camel. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So we set up a bunch of um, alerts on Camel 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 because we know certain products Amazon will bottom out at different times of the year and we know we can buy them and resell them. <laughs> And so we have done that a few times with a few different products. There you go. But why not do it with Bonus some of your favorite tip. skincare products? Because there's going to be times of the year where they're going to lower prices. So you might as well be in the know of when that is so that if you've got something you found and you bought three times, you could go ahead and stock up when it's on that bottom out price. All right. So that takes us to our fourth and final point, And that is to understand marketing. Mm. And I think that this one, um, it's been something that I've, I've always, I'm a, um, I guess you could probably call me a suspicious person. Sure. I'm a melancholic. Um, I'm suspicious of others' motives, f- f- sometimes for good reason and sometimes for not. Yeah. <laughs> Just because that's my, you know, kind of my base uh, way I approach the world. And so I'm not typically a person who gets sold, if you will. Some personalities are more prone to that. They get swept into a deal. I am always, I can see marketing from a mile away. And it's something that now as we are marketers ourselves, because we have an online business, Mm. um, one, I I hold ourselves to the absolute highest standards of marketing. I'm never going to say something that's not true. I'm never going to overcharge someone. A, an unjust price for something. Um, I'm never going to claim something that could be a result that w- wouldn't be commonly able to be achieved by any by someone. Um, and so we hold ourselves to that. But I, I see marketing in this clean beauty industry, and it feels like it's just run amok. Mm. It's everywhere. S- scarcity marketing of like, get it right now or else it's gone forever um or just this their companies are getting savvier about we are the only true clean beauty out there everyone else isn't uh you know and there's ways that i'm seeing different companies battling for that same space they're making bigger and bolder claims and some of them are just flat out not true at all right and there there's I'm not gonna peg any one company so don't nobody think that that's coming here but um it's just it feels unethical for some companies to basically paint a picture that unless you stick with their products you're risking your health Mm. and that is just total bs it's not true because their products are also very expensive and so now it's making people believe that in their brains that they're investing in their health by buying this particular brand of health of skincare products. Mm -hmm. And they're using that vernacular that this is an investment. And honestly, guys, that in the financial world, no, no. Investments are things that go up in value as time goes on. This is an expense. Our skincare routines are an expense. They may, if you wanted to look at it from a skin, you know, maintaining your your youthfulness or whatever, you may be able to argue that slightly, but you can do that with all, with products that cost a fraction. Absolutely. So, no, it's not an investment. You just overspent now. It was an overspend on an expense. Um, and so I think there's a lot of abuse of those terms in the industry and where I just want people to recognize the marketing, the positioning, and to be willing to question some of the claims, question some of the statements, question some of these, um, just kind of the angle that different companies are taking. I'm not saying you can't be a consumer and that you can't do business with different companies. You just need to be aware of how are they trying to market to me? What are they trying to position themselves as? And I want you to see through the marketing so then you can just make a 
informed decision about the product itself, Mm. if that makes sense. Definitely. Definitely. And I think, you know, most of the cost of our beauty products that make them so expensive is the name brand element of it Mm -hmm. is the packaging is the is the prettiness of it all and one of my favorite um companies and that i buy a lot of their the a lot of the pieces of their line is a super simple no bells and whistles their their packaging is black and white because they know that that's what makes it so expensive Mm. and so they keep it so low cost so they can keep their product lower cost as well i love that um so in looking for those kind of companies that value that over the Mm. bells and whistles Mm -hmm. and, and all that is is great and also just you're so right in that I fell for the marketing schemes with the curly girl. <laughs> the curly stuff. girl cult? <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. Be careful <laughs> out there. <laughs> um, and uh, just keep it simple. Understand your ingredients, what works and what doesn't. And that is something that you can consult a medical professional for. Um, mm-hmm. And also just through experience. Like I know that fragrances is something that really irritates my skin. So I always turn the bottles. I always look at the ingredients list and not just the front that promises this is an this is a anti-aging product. Okay, that's great. But what do the ingredients list tell us about that? Mm-hmm. Done enough, re- uh, enough uh, life experience and research to know what some of those ingredients are. And yep. granted, it has been at a cost, yeah. but um, it didn't need to be. If I mm-hmm. had just literally opened up Google and done a quick Google search, right, it would have been so much easier. Yep. Yeah. You and maybe any doctors that are involved in your life, if you have health conditions, you need to be the ones that are deciding what you're going to buy and put on your skin not marketers. Yes. Okay. So that's the moral of the story here on this. I remember years ago, this is not makeup related, but it shows the power of marketing. Mm. There was somebody, they sent me this as a joke because they knew it would get under my skin. <clears throat> there was like a, oh, well, I, I'm not even going to remember the specifics of it, but it was essentially a wooden block set, just wooden blocks, but it was described as, organic, Montessori, source, um, sourced locally, like all the buzzwords. Sure. And it was viewed as a stocking stuffer to put in a baby's stocking for Christmas. And it was being sold for almost $400. What? Yes. And I just laughed out loud so hard at that because you know somebody is going to fall for the marketing. Yeah. That right there is called positioning. Somebody is now positioning what we all know is a low-priced product. They're positioning themselves as a high-priced premium product. And now somebody, when they're buying it, they're not actually paying for the blocks. Mm. They're paying for a perceived status of how they feel about themselves, that they can buy high-end luxury products. And they're buying an identity. And that's what 99% of these luxury brands are doing for people. Whole Foods... It, the, the food's not actually more expensive than anywhere else. You go to Whole Foods to feel like you're better than other people sometimes. That sounds horrible, but it's 100% it's true. true. You feel better about yourself and now and it, it feeds your pride. And so that's something I, I don't like giving into that. Mm-hmm. And so if I feel like that is ever underneath the per- underneath the surface of a purchase I'm about to make, I shut that thing down oh. ASAP because that's not where I want to be operating out of or showing up f- as a human being. And so sometimes marketing plays with some of those base desires and um, like our concupiscence totally. as human beings. It plays into those places and I don't I don't like making decisions out of that. So that's why I'm always looking at what what is marketing trying to do here? Is it trying to sell me something out of envy? Is it trying to sell me something out of pride? Like that, ooh, mm, no. And so just understand that marketing and what messages are being sold under the surface. Yeah, and at the heart of it, beauty is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun playing with makeup and doing new things with your hair and and all that. And so (laughs) when we allow that element of pride to creep in, it can just ruin the fun. Mm -hmm. It really can. 
Yeah. It's nice to feel good about yourself. It's nice to find a fun moisturizer that you really, really like. Um, that not only works for your skin, but also makes you feel really good. And so that sliminess, don't invite that into your life. Yeah. And I think the last thing to add in on the marketing, though, is um, I don't do business with companies that won't entertain any sort of option outside of themselves. Mm. I just won't. Not, or people that are like that. I'm very... Um, I'm just, I'm a more gray person and people that are going to come down on hard lines and be like, it is this way or no way. I can't, I just know that it, there's context always matters. There's circumstances, different things work for this person over that. Like, yeah. let's not act like there's one way or no, I there's multiple ways. So any company that is going to act like they have the market cornered on clean beauty and that everything else is crap out there, I just can't do business with because it's just touting lies that they might have a great product, but at the end of the day, there's so many options for us and they can be both good for our bodies, good for our skin, not going to harm us in any way, but they don't have to break the bank. Now, if you're someone who has a lot of cash flow, and you're debt free and you've got your savings set and you're investing and you still have a lot of free money. I don't care. Go get that if you wanna, skincare refrigerator. If you want to spend something. Yeah. If that's where you you value that you love it. You have the extra cash. It's not hurting you or anybody else in your life. You're giving, you know, very generously. By all means, buy whatever skincare you'd like. Um, but for I'd say the overwhelming majority of us, that's not going to be our reality, at least for not for many more years while we still got young ones, you know, in our home or we're working on paying off student loans. We've got other obligations. You know, that's not going to be my reality for many more years. So but if that is you, more power to you. Um, But yeah, I hope this episode was insightful. I hope that you've got practical tips and that you've also kind of adopted kind of a lens through which to see the industry that is clean beauty and that you know you've got a few things that can help you do this um, both in a healthy way and that's not going to break the bank. You you can simplify, keep Mm -hmm. it simple. You can use that environmental working group website to kind of filter through and just give you what the options are if you want to make it super easy. You shop around, try to find that best deal, use the promo codes, Set up deal alerts. And then you need to always be looking at what is that marketing message being sent to me? Dissect it, put it to the side, and then make an objective decision on the product. Absolutely. And let's continue the conversation online. Yeah. You know, jump onto at WalletWin on Instagram or at AmandaTex on Instagram and um, talk to us about your experience with beauty and Mm -hmm. um, the marketing. How has the marketing affected you? What products have you found that work for you that are incredible and doesn't break the bank? Mm -hmm. We want to hear from you and I always love hearing suggestions. This is one of my favorite conversations to have. So uh, hit us up. Let us know. And until next time, bye for now.